Thank you. Thanks. Um, hope you're enjoying the, uh, the conference as much as I am. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a long way to come from Australia to go to a conference in Europe, but uh, so far uh, it's been a good decision. Um, what I'm going to tell you about today is really just um, the story of Meshed. Um, we're a small company. There's only five full-time employees and about four or five contractors at any point in time. Um, but the thing that drives us every day is that uh, we don't want to go back to uh, being uh, corporate robots. <laughs> so uh, we, we uh, the three of the principals in the company, um, that's my wife, Catherine, on the left. Uh, she's a smart cities expert and has worked for IBM and KPMG and some of the telcos in Australia. Um, I come from a, a sort of an IT sales and uh, technology general management background and um, Andrew on the right hand side there, he's the brains behind Mesh. he's the technical guy and uh, it was his idea to start the company and you're never going to read about us in a, um, in a Stanford magazine or a Harvard magazine on how to start a company because um, we had no business plan, we didn't really know what we were going to do but we started the company anyway. So why should you listen to me? Um, the only reason you should listen to me is because we've been able to make a successful business by using the components of TTN, LoRaWAN, and a bit of our own ingenuity and hard work. Um, even though we started the company in 2015, we all still had full-time jobs. <laughs> so we didn't do a whole lot of business in 2015. And in fact, we only all quit our full-time jobs uh, about 18 months ago to be full-time enmeshed, and uh, that turned out to be a pretty good decision. For some reason, one of these segments uh, hasn't come up, but uh, who are our customers? In the last 12 months, we've had a really successful um, surge in local government, so local councils, I think uh, certainly in the UK and in the United States, not too sure about how it works in Europe, but uh, we have three tiers of government in Australia, federal, state, and local government or local councils. Um, so that, that's become really the dominant part of our business in the last six to 12 months, and we've been very successful there. But also state government departments, we've got some big contracts with uh, rolling out LoRaWAN networks for state government. Um, universities is the orange segment that you can't see there. We've, they were some of our earliest customers, and we're now getting a lot more interest from enterprise. So, how do we make money? And I think this is kind of the point of why I'm here or why I've been invited here to demonstrate that it is actually possible to take a free product like TTN and make some money and build a business. And uh, I like to think of, and you guys will probably understand this more than most of the audiences that I speak to, um, if you think about Linux and Red Hat, we're kind of taking the Red Hat approach to TTN. So um, where we make most of our profit is not from the hardware. We sell gateways, we sell devices, but um, maintenance services, so each network that we sell, um, we maintain on an annual maintenance contract, um, and there's services that go with all our projects. And I brought this thing up on stage because this is now a subscription business that we've developed off the back of um, our network management business, if you like. So our customers really pay us to manage their networks. That's how we make money. But we've also, also been able to develop a people counting product. And this little box in my hand here is a Wi-Fi device counter. And it's a bit of a killer app. The councils love it. So TTN is really growing quickly in Australia, just like everywhere else. 200% um, year-on-year growth in Australia. And MESHT has been responsible for about 40% of the gateways that have been deployed in Australia so far. And they're, they're our customers. They're the ones who own the gateways, not us. So, what are we all about? Well, we want to dominate the IoT scene in Australia. And I know that's probably a lofty ambition, but, you know, dream big. Um, we want to have the best network, the most clients, 
and the best case studies, and it's certainly the case studies that I think carry the most weight in terms of growing your business. So how are we going forward? What's our business strategy? It's this little fella here, the cane toad. I'll tell you a very quick Australian story. Uh, the cane toad was introduced to Australia 100 years ago, and it was introduced as a biological control for cane beetles in the sugarcane fields. The only problem was they didn't do their homework very well, and the toads don't eat the beetles. But one thing the toad was really good at was reproducing. So now in Australia we have a terrible invasive species, it's about the size of a small dog, and it's everywhere. Everywhere north of a certain um, part of Australia, and they've landed and boy have they expanded. So we're taking the cane toad strategy to uh, business building. So Australia is a very large country, and I know everyone knows that, but until you actually have to drive across it to do business with lots of customers, you don't quite realise how big. So there's 537 councils in Australia, and by the way, sidebar, I'm, so, I'm going to concentrate on the council side of our business here. There is other sides to our business, but I'm going to show you what we did with councils. So we've still got a lot of uh, territory to cover, and we've got a lot of councils to speak to. At the start of the year, we had four clients who were local government councils. Uh, just after New Year this year, we have 32. <coughs> okay, so all of these little logos here are the councils that we've signed up, mainly in the last 12 months. And what we do for these guys is we build a LoRaWAN network for them because what they want to do is dip their toe into the IoT water. They don't want to jump in the deep end yet, but they want to get started, and we've given them a simple way to do that. And I think one of the reasons we've been successful is possibly because Catherine and myself are both ex-salespeople, so it's kind of instinctive for us to take something and then go out and sell it and hustle. But the reason the councils are buying this stuff is because it makes sense to them. It's a logical way for them to approach smart cities, which they all want to do. So what I'm going to tell you now is what we tell them, and very quickly take you through um, our spiel, if you like. So I'm hoping there's not too many Australians in the audience, because I'm giving away the shop here, but um, we tell them relatable stuff. We give them use cases and case studies, and we explain the technology to them in layman's terms. So we, we make it as simple as possible so that they can bring the whole council staff to a meeting and everyone will walk out of that room at the end having a basic understanding of how IoT and LP WANs work. We tell them about the versatility of the use cases and there is so many and this is one of the real strengths of uh, LoRaWAN as a standard of course. And we give them actual case studies. We've been in the business now long enough to have accumulated some credibility and some really successful stories. This is the Gold Coast up on the, uh, the top right-hand corner of Australia there. Without even trying, they reduced their bin collections by nearly 50% just by using smart bin sensors on LoRaWAN and TTN. Things like Council-owned barbecues. This is a big thing in Australia. I'm not sure if it is in Europe, but the councils provide electric and gas barbecues in the parks and on the beaches so that people can come and use it. They don't have to bring their own. So we tell them about what can be gained from monitoring these devices and these assets and how that can reduce the maintenance um, and improve the customer experience for the uh, citizens. Every council in Australia owns and runs and maintains sports grounds. Water is one of the most precious commodities in Australia. It's the driest continent on Earth after Antarctica. Um, and it costs a lot of money for these councils to water their, their um, green infrastructure. And we talk to them about some of the awards that some of our clients have been starting to win by putting in LoRaWAN, TTN, and some basic use cases and start getting some returns from those use cases. 
We talk to them about how they can protect their citizens and make them safer by using smart technology. And this is the killer app for these guys. They love that they can put a small device in the roof of one of their buildings, in the park, at the barbecue, uh, at a festival where they're expecting a couple of hundred people. They can start to get some real-time information about how many people are arriving, when they're arriving, how long did they stay. And that's really uh, very um, important information for them. So uh, we didn't know this was going to be a killer app, but um, we made 100 of them and they sold out in a week. And one council bought 50 of them. We tell them about how quickly, easily and cheaply that you can solve some, um, some problems, especially information gathering problems. So in Australia, we have this phenomenon called the grey nomad, retired people driving around in recreational vehicles. And all the small towns are trying to attract these people because they bring money and they bring commerce to their shops. So they install these things called RV dump points. And I probably don't have to explain what that is, but it's, um, it's important for the, for the um, people driving the RVs. So for a very small amount of money, we could deploy in less than seven days a parking pod, an accelerometer, they already had the dashboard, we just connected up the sensors, bang, they've got the information, 24 by 7 by 3, 365. A lot of art galleries in Australia, sorry, a lot of councils in Australia run art galleries. Um, and now the insurance companies are putting uh, a lot of restrictions on the atmosphere and the environment that they can actually put these um, travelling art shows into, because sometimes there's more than a billion dollars worth of art in some of these travelling shows. So for about 350 US, they can use one of these little sensors to monitor the temperature, humidity, and the CO2, uh, which they need to be able to guarantee the insurers that it's a controlled environment. And then we're pushing that data into the Honeywell, the Schneider, the Siemens building automation system. Another important tool for us has been the catalog. We've got about 250-odd LoRaWAN devices that we publish to our clients. And it's half a practical tool and half a marketing tool. So what it's actually doing is proving to them the breadth of product that's available for this one network. And that if they make a small outlay, they can actually use it for not just one thing, but dozens of things. The other thing that the councils have a remit to do is to develop their community, to provide opportunities for their communities. And they love the fact that they can use this free network, they can grab an Arduino kit, they can grab maybe 20 students or 20 retirees or 20 members of the community and teach them how to build a LoRaWAN sensor. And this is something that the councils are actually paying us to do now. So we run workshops where they get community engagement going and skills development. And then they can take their sensor home and start using it. If they're kids, they start learning about how to pull down the code from the dashboard and start coding. And this was important. Our customers were telling us, uh, we don't need to spend a lot of money and we can't spend a lot of money. We just need a basic kit to get us going, something that's plug and play that we can put up ourselves and we can get going with this whole smart cities thing. So we put this kit together and it includes a gateway, a few sensors, a dashboard, the services, and importantly for us, a maintenance contract to run the network for them and to manage the gateways. And then we explain to them about this amazing thing called the Things Network, which I don't have to explain to you people. And uh, that's important. They get really excited by this concept. And we tell them how now there's enough councils in Australia all doing this TTN thing that it's starting to become a national network. We've only got 32 of these guys. 
there's still 300 odd to go. That's going to be a big, big network if we get that going. Now, I want to spend a minute on TTI because this is, um, this is quite important for our business. It's been a bit slow. We would like to have more TTI customers. We've got a couple of big ones. So the Department of Agriculture in uh, New South Wales, which is the biggest state by population in Australia, they're paying us to set up smart farming networks on Lorawan for them. And Sydney Water, which is one of the biggest water authorities on the planet, they're getting us to set up trial Lorawan networks. But I think the, the real gotcha for these guys, and one of the reasons that they're picking TTI instead of another operator, is that TTN and TTI gives them the perfect way to migrate from a POC to a serious industrial grade situation. I don't think any other product offers that. And now we're starting to get some of the big enterprise companies coming to us so that they can white label our services, so that they can build a solution that they can take to their own clients, stamp it with orange in this case, but it's actually us under the hood. So just to recap, what's the business model? Build a credible solution. No one's going to buy it if it doesn't look like it's industrial strength. Get the ecosystem right. And that's one of the reasons we're here today and to this conference is to make contact with all these people who make the products. And you've got to go out and sell it. It's not going to sell itself. You have to go out and build the relationships, speak to the people. Um, I've been in B2B sales for 25 years. My experience is that people don't buy B2B unless they eyeball you. And now we're seeing the land and expand coming to fruition, where a, a customer has ordered one gateway in a starter kit. Now they're starting to say, ah, we need to do that bin solution in that suburb over there, and we don't have any LoRaWAN coverage. Can you, can you give us two more gateways? It's starting to expand. And we think that eventually most of these customers will end up as TTI customers, because once they've gone through the POC stage, we believe that they will have some applications that are critical to them and that they can't afford to be on a network that doesn't have an SLA. Rinse and repeat. Just keep doing it. So, what have we learned? IoT is certainly uh, expanding very quickly and that's going to float all boats. So if we can um, expand at the same rate, will be okay. LoRaWAN is winning, TTN is winning, councils love the story, the combination of things that we've put together for them. It's not easy, but I think you can do it. And that's what I'm here to tell you, I guess, is that you can use TTN and TTI, they're brilliant products, they're well supported, and you can build a reliable business around it. So now we have sticky networks applications being put on their networks. The councils are not going to turn them off. The state government departments aren't going to turn them off. They're going to expand them. We've got a very healthy business now, and we didn't even know what we were going to do when we started. So uh, that says something. And if we can do it, you probably can too. Thanks for listening. Paul McManus. No time for questions, but well done. Thank you very um, much. I, I'll take this one of you. Is there uh, one, one last question? You know, you've, you've been talking about Australia so much. What should we copy in Europe? Oh, that's a tough one. The, the cane toad approach? <laughs> the cane, toad the cane toads are, themselves? Uh, do, not, do not bring cane toads to Europe. Whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> okay. They well, probably won't survive here in this weather anyway, so you're lucky. <laughs> okay. okay. Bob Manus. Thank you.